How to draw a tangerine using cross contour hatching. Hi everyone. Okay, so um, today we're going to be drawing a tangerine. If you don't have a tangerine, you could draw a lime like I have here, an apple, a potato. Um, if you can't find any fruit or vegetables that are around, maybe you could find a rock and you could uh, use that as your source. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be paying special attention to the form of the tangerine. And we're going to be doing that by using a technique called contour hatching. Now, some of my classes might know what that is, but I'll just give you a quick demonstration um, to describe how I want you to approach contour hatching. Okay, so let's look at a normal hatching line. So a normal hatching line goes in straight directions. And a cross hatching line goes in one direction. And then obviously it has that cross going in the opposite direction to create more tone. However, with a contour line, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be using a curved line. And this is coming just from a simple application of my pencil uh, going down the way, obviously, and I'm using my wrist to hinge that in a way that creates an equal parallel curved line. So we can use this if we were to imagine here's an orange and the light source is coming this way and we are going to create shadow on this side. We can use this um, directional method of hatching called contour hatching to create a shadow which also describes the shape of the ball it's making the form much more pronounced now an extra thing that we can do is we can make it into a cross contour hatching drawing simply by adding another type of hatching line or contour line rather going in the opposite direction so you can see how immediately i've made the ball stand out much more because of this darker line this darker hatching so with this in mind we can apply this to a tangerine or whatever object it is you've chosen to draw which is spherical in shape okay so I begin by drawing the outline of the tangerine. You can see it's not a constant line. I'm trying to pay special attention to where it's bulging out. You wouldn't have the same effect if that was an orange or a lime maybe, but with this you could see the segments. Now what I've just drawn there are the highlights and there where the whiter light is shining off of the tangerine. And now where I'm starting to draw is the darker shadowy areas are my dark tones and the shadow on the surface that the tangerine is sitting on and this line is actually the, the line I just drew is the line where the light of the table is reflecting onto the tangerine so it's not a dark edge there's actually a light edge just at the bottom of it so you can see that I've started to add my hatching line to it now or my contour hatching line so there are no straight lines. I'm using my hands kind of natural way to curve using the wrist or a pinching movement. And I'm trying to describe the form of that tangerine uh, only, I suppose, with horizontal lines going around it. So it's a little bit like a basket so far with horizontal lines making it up. And for the surface, I am just using a normal hatching line because the table is flat, obviously. Okay, so with this second half of the video, I am now adding my vertical curved lines onto the horizontal contour lines that were going around a tangerine. So you can see that these are paying attention more to the vertical curves that are making up this sphere-like surface of this tangerine. And I'm now cross-hatching onto the surface of the table because the table is flat.
So it's a little bit like if you imagine a fishing net has been wrapped around a uh, football or something like that, then we are imagining what that net would look like if it was stretched around the side that was closest to you and the side that was receding away from you where those um, the squares would get smaller the further they were away. So I'm adding a bit more contrast now, really trying to make those shadows pop out on the surface of the table. And yeah, just trying to bring out some of the final areas of tone on the tangerine. Okay, so final thing to do here would be to pull out some of these highlights and I'm going to use a rubber for that. So there's a bit of reflection coming off of the table. So I'm going to erase that area and there's also some reflection because the light, as you can see, is coming from the side. So there's going to be more light around there anyway. And it sort of looks like it gets lighter coming up to this highlight up here. So again, just moving the rubber in the same direction as my pencil marks. That will help to make it look 3D. Now, where else? Where else? Maybe just on this side here. And yeah, there's a, you can't see the orange, but where this area, this kind of white stripe is, that is um, the reflection coming off of the table. So I suppose I could bring that out a little bit more, to bring out more contrast between light and dark, which is called chiaroscuro. So I'll just um, get the rubbings off. And that's it, finished.